Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. All right, so a little story not about Jack and Diane. And truthfully, I'm surprised that more developers don't do this. But before I get into all that, a little story. I thought that she was going to jump out of her chair. This was the first time that I had tried this. And I remember to me, it felt kind of like awkward pandering. And I knew my delivery was off a bit and it had come out a bit funny, but apparently it didn't matter because her eyes lit up. Now, being an experienced interviewer, she tried to hide it, but several years of sales experience had taught me how to read people and I'd become pretty good at it. And I knew that she was excited. So I was at a first interview for a job that I really wanted at the time. And the whole interview, I had been waiting for an opening some sort of question that was a natural fit for me to demonstrate that I had researched the company because I did. I'd spent a lot of time doing that. And then she finally asked me one. She asked, what about you? What do you look for in a company? And that was it. I was in at that point. So I said, well, I look for a company that has a clear idea of its culture and values and really tries to live them every day company that values its employees and really embodies the ideas of teamwork and a people-focused culture, which I know sounds 100% cliche. But I went on for a few more minutes. And the thing was, is my entire spiel was straight from their website. I was basically regurgitating their value statement back to them, just in my own words. And then I threw in a few examples from my own experience, my own life that illustrated why those things were important to me. And voila, I had her eating out of my hand and it was over at that point. I knew it. She knew it. And if you think about it, it's kind of silly. I've done this so many times since. And honestly, I'm always surprised that it still works. It shouldn't be that easy, but what it tells you is that people don't do it. What you should do is first off, research the company. Go on their website, find their vision, mission, and value statements. Read about their culture. And know these are the things they profess to be most important to them. In fact, oftentimes, I know this company in particular, because I did end up getting hired, Internally, they'll view those things as more important than qualifications and skills. A culture fit is more important oftentimes than what skills you have. So in many ways, knowing this and being able to signal it is more important than your job history, your recommendations, and all the stuff we obsess over. So research the company. Second, write out your spiel. Imagine the interviewer asked you directly about your own vision, mission, and value statements. What would you say considering what you know about theirs? How would you say it in a way where to them it felt like you both were a perfect match? Write that out and rehearse the perfect answer that would signal to them you have the same values as they do. Then be sure to include examples from your life that prove it so it doesn't just come off as awkward and pandering. And then most importantly, be sure to write it out in your own words. Don't just copy and paste from their website. Finally, regurgitate it back to them like I did. Wait for a good opportunity during your interview to rattle off your spiel. Now, if all else fails, most interviewers will finish up by asking you something along the lines of, is there anything else that you want us to know? If you have to, use that as your opportunity to rattle off your spiel. Now, if you can include it, in bits, and as you get more advanced and do this more, you will. But if you can inv- include your spiel and the things about culture and values and so forth into the answers to other questions, then that's even better. Now, if you do that, I am convinced from having done it so much myself that doing this one single thing will increase your chance of getting hired five to tenfold. Because companies that take the time to write out a vision, mission, and value statement really care about them, or at least they pretend to on paper. So when you signal 
that you've read it and you pretend right along with them, it becomes this weird kind of hire me virtue signaling. They're almost forced to hire you. Otherwise, in their minds, they must not really value what they say they do. I mean, if qualifications outweigh culture and hiring, then they must not really care about their culture. At least that's what they think. And it becomes this tough cognitive dissonance for them that works to your advantage. But this all goes back to a larger point I always make about companies in their hiring process. They really have no clue. Now, some think they do, but most don't. For example, did you know that 66% of companies say they've experienced negative effects from a bad hire? And 10% of those say that that bad hire has led directly to a loss of sales for their business. According to Harvard Business Review, 80% of employee turnover is due to bad hiring decisions. And in a study, 36% of 1,400 executives surveyed claim the leading factor of a failed hire outside of performance problems is a poor skills match. And those numbers are roughly the same every year. So these companies know they're hiring the wrong people for the wrong jobs. They know it's ruining morale and client relationships, and they know it's costing them money. Yet, they continue to do it year after year. This is a huge advantage for you, the hiree. They are desperate for good people yet they have no idea how to find them, so they're waiting for someone to come in and blow them away. And this is true of really big companies. Imagine small businesses where the person owning the business is the one doing the interviewing, and they're not expert interviewers. So you can leverage that to get a job that you may not be the most qualified for. In fact, This is the same advantage that I've used to get hired for jobs I had no business getting hired for. A sales job that I didn't have any of the right qualifications for. A management position where months earlier I had walked out on the job and yet they hired me back and gave me a promotion and so forth. Jobs that I had demonstrated to that company I was unreliable. Now I've always readily admitted I'm not great at being an employee, which is why I run my own business. So, But... I was able to continue to get hired for these jobs that I had no business getting hired for. And you can leverage this advantage, the same advantage, to land you a high-paying tech job even when you don't have all the skills that are necessarily required. This is the exact same thing my little brother did to get hired at IBM for a Java application developer position when he didn't know any Java. Now, in lesson one of my Ace the Interview series, which I just released that lesson on Patreon, I will show you how to do this. Plus, I'm going to show you the secret that big tech companies don't want you to find out. So this is for you if you're someone who's not really into the freelancing thing, you don't necessarily want to go that route, and you'd prefer a more secure, stable 9 to 5, but doing something that you love and enjoy. Now, all you got to do to get access to that lesson and the entire course as I release it is sign up at the exclusive courses support level at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. When you do, level one, lesson one should be right there near the top of your Patreon feed. And as I release the remaining lessons, they're going to show up right there as well and you'll be notified. All right. So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon to get access. All right, thanks for listening to this episode. If you like it, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of content. If you share this with somebody who's looking to get an interview or maybe hesitant uh, and can use this as kind of a kick in the butt to, to really go for it, I'd appreciate that. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Also, as I continue to mention all the videos I'm releasing here on YouTube, I'm doing longer form podcasts in the podcast only format. So you can only get those on iTunes, Uh, Android, and SoundCloud. So if you want to make sure to subscribe to that so you get those longer form podcasts, you can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash iTunes for your Apple device, johnmorrisonline.com slash Android for your Android device, or any one of those three or your desktop, you can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash SoundCloud 
in order to subscribe there. All right. Thanks again for listening. We'll talk to you next time.